The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Man zara qabri wajabat lahu shafa'ati." Whosoever visits my grave, my shafa'ah, my intercession becomes wajib for that person. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "Man zarani بعد mamati فكأنما زارني في حياتي." أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام, that whosoever visits me after my death, it is as if he visited me within my lifetime. فَقَدْ قَالَ The Prophet ﷺ says, مَنْ حَجَّ وَلَمْ يَزُرْنِي فَقَدْ جَفَانِي Whosoever performs hajj and does not come to see me, does not come to visit me, فَقَدْ جَفَانِي he, he has done zulm on me, he has oppressed me. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, Whosoever does hajj and then goes to Madinah al-Munawwara to visit the Prophet ﷺ, كُتِبَ لَهُ حَجَّتَانِ مَبْرُورَتَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the reward of two accepted hajj. Mabruratan, accepted, no doubt. It is the aqidah of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is alive inside his grave. Every time we stand there and we say, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replies to us by saying, Assalamu alayk. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Assalamu alayk, there's nothing better in this world than that. So we really should prepare ourselves to, for this. And we all know it's a very clear hadith. The Prophet ﷺ mentions that whenever someone sends salutations upon the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ is informed of these salutations by the angels. So one of the ways we should prepare of our visit to Medina al Munawwara is increase our number of salutations to the Prophet. ﷺ. Begin, you know, Salat ala Rasul. Whether it's Durud Ibrahim that we do in our Salat, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. But now that we many of us are only doing the Durud, the Salat ala Rasul in our Salat, right, in our prayers. We should at least, at least after every Salat, send salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ten times. At least ten times after every Salat. Because every time we send a salutation on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the angels inform him. That this abd, this servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his salutations upon you. So when we go to Medina al Munawwara, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be able to recognize us. Right? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will recognize that this is that person. Right? We will already have a bond, a connection with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to make sure that we create that bond and connection with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by acting, by sending salutations, and by acting upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right? You have to make sure. If someone, believe it or not, were to tell us that we are going to meet, for example, let's just take the president of this country. Right? Not that many of us are very fond of him, but. I bet you we would all prepare ourselves for that trip. We would go, make sure we buy a nice suit, a nice pair of shoes, a nice shirt, you know, a nice tie, everything. You know, the the whole nine yards as we would say. You know, make sure we're nice, clean. You know, we we would spend all the money that we would have to just because we're meeting the president of a certain country. Or we're meeting someone, you know, very high, a very elite person. How can we even begin to compare the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with these people? There's no way we can even compare. And we're we're going to see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we have to make sure that we start preparing ourselves for this trip. And by preparing, it means that act upon the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is how you prepare yourself to meet the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And make ourselves look like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's very important, but we have to make sure that when we see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is able to recognize us spiritually and physically. And one of the greatest things, and one of the signs of a Muslim, is the beard on his face, no doubt. If we look at the examples of all the Anbiya alaihi wasallatu wasallam, we will find that they all had beards, with all due respect to the differences of opinion. And we all know that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself had a beard. And very clearly in the hadith, it has been mentioned. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that 
lengthen your beards. Ifa'u lihya, the words of the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ has not mentioned this in one hadith, and not two in various different ahadith. Narrated by various different Sahaba Rizwanullahi Alayhim Ajma'een and many of the Imams of Hadith who have collected the ahadith. In fact, it's been mentioned that a certain people came to visit the Prophet ﷺ. He looked at them and saw that they were clean shaven. Immediately he turned his gaze away from them. And he asked them by saying, Man amarakuma bihada? Who ordered you two to do this? So they replied by saying, Amarana Rabbuna, our king ordered us to, you know, be clean shaved. The Prophet ﷺ replied that my Lord has ordered me to lengthen my beard. And it's been mentioned that until those people stayed in Medina Munawwara, although they were the guests of the Prophet ﷺ, he did not look up at them. He did not look up at them. And, you know, it's very scary. No matter how weak we may be, but what if, what if we go to visit the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? He sallallahu alaihi wasallam looks at us and he turns his face away. That is the worst thing that anything anyone could ever experience. So we should we should prepare ourselves. No doubt, it's it might be difficult. It's a little you know, it's meant to be difficult. Right? That's where the reward is. So if we have not yet grown our beards then the last time we shaved was the last time we shaved. We will at least make sure that our beards stay until we visit the Prophet wasallam. And while we are there, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He give us the strength and ability to keep it. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our prayers. Inshallah. But we have to make the effort. And for some brothers, alhamdulillah, there are beards. For some brothers, there's no beards. A lot of times it's usually the wives, right? No beard allowed. A lot of times it's your own decision, but then the wife is an excuse. So let, let that not come into place. Let us, all, let us all think that we are meeting the king of the worlds. Really, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, you, know, you, fee, you know, you see people, you see people in all different states when you go to the haram in Medina. Some people are happy, you know, they're smiling because they're meeting the Prophet. And then there's some, you feel, you see the fear on their faces. It's a good fear, you know, they fear. They're, they're in the presence of, of such a great being. Are they worthy of even standing in the presence of that person? You know, all the, all, all the, all the wrong things that we have done, how are we even worthy of standing in the presence of the Prophet wasallam? And you see fear. I, I was reading a book when I was in Medina Munawwara last. Uh, I had some experiences and it just so happened that I, was, I met an alim in Medina Munawwara and he handed me a book and he says, read this. And on the first page it was mentioned, this, this, what I just mentioned now, that when a person visits the Prophet wasallam, there are certain states a person, you know, a person is in. And some people are in the state of fear, which is also a good sign. You know, and some people are in the state of happiness. They're seeing the Prophet wasallam. But whatever it may be, we should prepare ourselves. So now you will go to the Haram, inshallah, in Medina al Munawwara. Okay, now what you do is you enter into the Haram. Obviously, if you have time, you'll pray to Raka'ah, Tahiyyat al-Masjid. And then you come um, towards this area. You will come here. Now let me just kind of explain it to you. This is the Sufa. Very easily visible. Um, it's about, it's an area about this high, about a foot high, right? It's just a very, it's a very big area, I think with three or four rows on it. Um, that's where the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een, used to sit. The masjid was only this much, right? And after the classes and everything would be finished, or after the dars of the Prophet ﷺ would finish, they would come and sit outside here. They would actually live there. That's why they're known as the Ashab al-Suffa, the people of the Suffa. And Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, one of the Sahaba ajma'in, who has narrated the major, you know, a good portion of the hadith on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is one of the students of, you know, the Sufa. That's where he lived. That's where he sat. That's where he was. So it's it's an area about a foot high. Um, preferably, you should make it a point to do your salat there also. This area is the rawda, rawda min riyadh al jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Ma bayna bayti." That between my house and my mimbar, which is right here, is the rawda, is the garden from the gardens of Jannah. Now obviously when you enter Jannah, whatever you ask Allah for is accepted. So this is the Jannah of the face of this earth. 
It's very easily visible. Um, all the carpets are red. The carpets in that area are gray, gray bluish. But even if you're able to pray two rak'ah in there, you're very lucky. But if you can pray more than that, subhanAllah, be in there and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, this is one of the opportunities where you don't want to waste time and you want to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is like, remember when we were standing, um, when we first saw the Kaaba and we were making dua. Or on the day of Arafah when we were making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also another place where you make dua. So I'm just kind of explaining that, although that's not the first thing you want to do. Now what happens is you will be, you will walk inside, you will walk towards here and see there's three graves, one, two, three. The first one starts here, the second one a little further down and the third one a little further down. There's three wired gates here, one, two and three. The first gate, some people think and they make a mistake that the first gate is the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu the second one is Abu Bakr and the third one is Umar radiallahu anhu. They are all in the middle gate. Not the first one and not the last one. The middle gate has three holes inside it. There's one about here, the second one is about here and the third one is about here. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is sleeping this way, sideways with his face because the Qibla is behind you. So he's sleeping with his face towards the Qibla. So that's where the Prophet ﷺ is. And then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is after him, a little further down. He's buried a little. And then Umar radiallahu anhu. And then there's still one more space left for Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. He will be buried there. So inshaAllah ta'ala. So now when you go to do your salam, you will go here and you will stand. You will stand by the first gate. Right? And then you will say your salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obviously, you will look down, you will have utmost respect, you will not try to glance inside the gates. By the way, there's nothing inside there. You cannot see the graves. Um, there are actually, you cannot, you might see a little green covering, but that's not the top of the grave. The graves have actually, the graves are actually closed by one wall, which is, uh, you know, which is closed basically. And then later on, uh, one of the kings came and he actually closed it again. So there's actually two sets of walls before you can even see the graves. That's why if you ever came across an email that said that this is the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is a hoax, that is the grave of Imam Rumi Rahmatullahi Alayhi in Konya, Turkey. Sheikh Jalaluddin Rumi rahimahullah in Konya, Turkey. I have a friend who actually went there and he saw it personally so he told me that this is the grave of Imam Rumi rahmatullahi and immediately after that I actually did a little bit of research and I came across the fact that the graves are actually closed by two sets of walls. The second set of walls is just so big that there's no way you can even go inside. It's closed from the top and everything. There's only one window opening on the top but that's again it's just it's closed so you cannot get inside. Now when you go to say the salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best method to do it is not stand in the front. Because now the police are standing here and they want you to keep on moving. Because there's a lot of people coming, there's a lot of traffic. So preferably, you kind of want to stand towards the back, which is actually the front. Because the qibla is that way. Towards the back, the grave in the front. So the people are just passing through and you can peacefully, with ease, say salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's no one pushing you away. You know, the best salam is As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah And then there's a whole set of salam that you can say As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Habib Allah, ya Nabi Allah You know, you can But whatever You know, it's preferable that we memorize a little bit of salat and salam And not read it out of a book like a parrot I mean, stand there with your eyes closed, your mind concentrated And really, As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah You know, really say it with your heart Feel it when you're saying it, not just like a puppet. Don't just you know just keep on saying it. It, it should it should come from the heart. And as many times as we're saying salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam is replying to us. So keep that in mind. Uh, another thing, if you do end up ever going for Umrah, the Haram usually opens up at about between 3:15 and 3:20 in the morning. When the Haram opens in the morning, people are rush, rushing inside to pray in the Rawdah. Which means there's no one saying salam, not a single soul. So you can actually stand there and you would be the only one in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ. So uh, that's also something else you might want to keep in mind. Um, and then you would move over 
to the grave of Abu Bakr radiallahu an and you would say Assalamu alayka ya Amir al-Mu'mineen and then you would move over one to the grave of Umar radiallahu an and then again you would say Assalamu alayka ya Khalifa al-Muslimin or ya Amir al-Mu'mineen and you would say Salam upon you know you know Abu Bakr and then Umar radiallahu an now the Masnoon method the police want you to leave they just say go the Masnoon method though is to come back to the grave of Abu Bakr and say Assalamu alaykum ya Amir al-Mu'mineen and then come to the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then say salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then leave from there now this is possible if you're way in the back do you understand what I'm saying? if you, if you're, if you come around and just kind of walk towards the wall in the back because if you're right in the front they just want you to keep on moving you usually leave out to the door this is, this is by the way a one way street there's no two way but if you're standing in the back, you can just kind of go, you know, come back and then just go wherever you want to. So preferably you want to do that. Um, make dua there also. Obviously you will not raise your hands when you're making the dua. Um, and obviously the Arabs that are, the Saudis, you know, they're really big about this. They don't, they just think everything is shirk. So that also becomes a problem at times. But you should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're making dua, turn your face towards the Kaaba and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep in mind that your back is not towards the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you're sitting in the haram in Medina, please make sure that you're sitting with adab, you know, you're sitting correctly, your feet are not towards the qibla or towards the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, you should be seated in a manner because the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, people who live in Medina Munawwara, when they pass by the haram and they see the green dome, they say, Assalamu alaykum ya Rasulullah. Right? So that's how much respect they have for the Prophet Wasallam and his masjid. So that's why when we're inside the masjid, when we are in Medina Munawwara, we should be, you know, we should uh, be careful, make sure what we do is correct, what we say is correct. Don't get into fights, arguments or quarrels. It's just not the way to do things. One salat in Medina Munawwara is equal to 50,000 salat in the haram in Medina Munawwara. So there's no comparing it. There's no way you can compare anything. Um, and then when you're in Medina Munawwara, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam every Saturday used to go to Quba, Masjid al Quba. That's the masjid when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came when he migrated to Medina Munawwara. That's the first masjid of Islam. The verse of, uh, the verse of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran, La Masjidun Ussisa ala taqwa It's actually in regards to the Masjid Quba. So if you have, if you're there on a, usually your tour operator will actually take you on a ziyarah to a lot of these sacred sites and they'll take you to Quba also. But if you're there on um, Saturday, um, just, you know, go outside to a taxi, say Masjid Quba. He'll charge you five, ten riyals. They'll take you Masjid Quba. Pray to Raka'ah there. It's the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He Sallallahu Alaihi used to go uh, on, uh, on Saturdays to Quba. And then after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did this, Umar Radiallahu Anhu also used to go every Saturday. Um, and then you should go to um, the graveyard in Medina Munawwara. Obviously, you should go to Jannatul Ma'la in Makkatul Mukarrama, the graveyard in Makkatul Mukarrama, and then the graveyard in Medina Munawwara also. Obviously, there's a lot of very great Sahaba <laughs> who have been buried inside uh, the graveyard in Medina Munawwara. So we should make it a point to go there. Uh, pray for them. Obviously, they don't need our prayers. It is by our own prayers that we are benefiting our own selves. So please keep that in mind. And then when we leave from Medina Munawwara, there should be the Wada'i Salam, the final Salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Go there again with utmost respect um, and, and say Salam in a manner that this is the last Salam, you know, this is your last greeting and your last meeting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and do it with a lot of adab and and a lot of respect um, and then again this shouldn't be our last salam on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right we should always have the intention of coming back but when we're there we should do it with a lot of adab with a lot of manners when you're in Medina Munawwara you shouldn't just be doing one or two salams you know the first one and the last one go there as much as possible once a day twice a day three times a day as much as possible go there as much as possible um, and again, like I mentioned over and over in the beginning, when we come back, we should all come back with good memories. We should not come back with any bad memories and there should be nothing bad on our tongues. We shouldn't say anything bad about it. With the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to invite us to His house again. Because if we say something evil about His house, and those people who are guarding His house, and those people who live around His house, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not like it. And this just might result in the fact that we might not be able to visit the sacred land again. So we should make sure that we are very careful 
uh, about uh, what we say and what we do. Mm-hmm.